Hi, I am Detective Sheeran, and in this episode of NC50, I'll be solving a crime mystery using DNA fingerprinting techniques. Alexander Residence Hall is a wild place. One of the things that makes it wild is the number of things that get stolen from the vending machines in the basement. The RAs in the building have been told to keep an eye on the snacks in the vending machine whenever they're on duty. When on duty, RA Nielsen made his way down to the basement to check the status of the vending machine. It was dark, but he saw a reflection of a metal piece from afar. Before he could see who it was, the thief noticed him and ran out of the window, leaving the spatula on the floor. Danielson turned on all the lights and saw that the vending machine was empty, so he called his detective friend Sharon to solve the mystery. Sharon came in, investigated the crime scene, and collected a DNA sample from the spatula. She also did some investigations to figure out who were the last people in the basement during that time. She gathered the DNA samples from them too and then headed back to her crime lab. Suspect 1 is Michael, who is a resident of Alexander Hall as well as an athlete, and it will be really bad for his athletic career if it turns out he is a thief. Suspect 2 is Michael's dad, Sam, who is here for Parents Week. Despite being old and grumpy, he stayed and joined his son's friends for a game night in the basement that night. Suspect 3 is Holden, a third-year student who also attended the game night. In response to the reported crime, he said that whoever stole from their vending machine did so rightfully as their tuition was enough to cover it. Suspect 4 is Matt, who is from the UK and found such accusations unbelievable, as he strongly dislikes junk food and he wouldn't go near the vending machine even if he was paid to do so. Then we have the witness, R.A. Danielson, as well as Detective Sharon from the 5 Task Force. DNA found at the crime scene, along with the DNA of the four suspects as well as the witness, have been amplified for two VNTR loci and run on two different gels to create DNA fingerprints. The way this works is that DNA is loaded at the negative end of the gel electrophoresis, and based on its size, they migrate at different rates towards the positive end. Larger DNA pieces migrate slower, and smaller DNA pieces migrate faster. To find the vending machine thief, we must evaluate the similarities between each VNTR locus. Looking at the result of the first electrophoresis gel for the first loci, we can see that the DNA banding pattern of the evidence DNA matches exactly with the DNA banding pattern of Michael's, Holden's, and Matt's. But which of the three actually committed the crime? To find out, we have to look at VNTR for locus 2. This is because for a suspect to be proven guilty, all band patterns at both loci need to be exactly the same as the ones found at the crime scene. In this VNTR, we can see that the DNA band patterns for Sam and Holden's is the same as the DNA band pattern found on the scene, since both bands are at the same location. Michael and Matt have only one band in common with the evidence DNA, so they cannot be viable suspect. Therefore, this VNTR shows that Danielson, Michael, and Matt are not the thieves. However, Holden is a consistent suspect when looking at both loci and therefore is the vending machine thief. Additionally, we can prove that Sam and Michael are father and son because they have one band in common at both loci, proving that Michael got one band from his dad and the other one from his mom. 